When you take the goodness of God for granted, then you will be grounded. Many have remained grounded because they've taken God for granted. At every opportunity, always return the glory to God. Always recognize His goodness in your life because every good gift that you have, the life you have, the health that you have, the children you have, the job that you have, they are from your Father. God is your source. Every other areas, your job, people around you are only channels that God uses as a source for your resources. Your health is from the Lord. Your peace is from the Lord. That you have seen the seventh month in the year 2022 is because of Lord's faithfulness. Father Lord, we thank you. Just lift up your hand and say, Father Lord, I thank you. I recognize your goodness in my life, in the lives of my family. I celebrate your faithfulness. I will not take you for granted, Lord, but my heart is full of gratitude. My heart is full of appreciation of all that you have done for me. I will not be blindsided by what you have done. I will not allow what I desire to blindside me to what you have done. Because I know as I give you thanks, you will multiply further blessings unto me. I am not limited. I am not church changed. I have been created in your image. I am the best version of myself. And I know that I am stepping into higher levels. I'm becoming all that you have created me to be. Nothing will stop your agenda in my life. No forces of darkness will be able to stop me. Thank you, Father. As we're about to receive his word, ask God to send you a word that will turn your world around. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 8, he sent a word to Jacob and he lighted upon Israel. He sent a word to Jacob and he lighted upon Israel. There is a word that can transform your life. Jacob was a trickster, Jacob was a froster, Jacob was a supplanter. But when a word came, it transformed him into Israel. The angel said, I cannot bless you as Jacob. You need to be transformed into Israel. And then you will have favor before man. Hallelujah. Is somebody speaking to, for your own sent word this morning? There is a word for a moment. And that word will come your way. That will transform you into all that God has created you to be. Everything that has limited you so far shall be broken off your life in the name of Jesus. Whatever shame that has trailed you so far shall disappear from your life in the name of Jesus. God is turning your shame into glory. God is turning your pains into gain. In the name of Jesus. So I want you to be focused, expectant, 
Because there's a word coming. If the media can mute this TV up right here. So this month has been declared unto you and I as I am set for exploits. Can you say that if you believe it? I am set for exploits. Somebody say that again. Say it as if you believe it. Say it as if you know it. Say it as if you are becoming it. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 19 that the earnest expectation of the creation is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. The the world is waiting for you eagerly to begin to manifest. God says you are for exploits. God says you are to reign. God says you have a great calling. But sometimes because of fear, because of fear of the unknown, because of fear of failure, because of fear of what we people will think, we hold ourselves back from what God has put in our hearts. This morning I will be bringing a message I titled, No More Hiding. Somebody say no more hiding. You've been hiding those gifts. You've been hiding those talents. You've been hiding those dreams that God has put in your heart. God is saying no more hiding for you. It is time for you to step out and begin to manifest in the realms of exploits. It is time for you to become all that God has called you to be. You know, we say, what if we try and nothing happens? What if I don't have the talent? What if people don't accept me? And too often, we are letting the what what ifs stop us from doing what God has put in our hearts? You know, many people are living with hidden dreams, hidden talents, hidden gifts, hidden potentials. You know, there are some people that are seated or listening to me right now. You have books in you that God has called you to write. But you are saying, oh, I don't, people will, people will not read it. You have a gift of a song that you are meant to write. But you are saying, oh, people don't want to hear this. God has given you a talent to sing. But you say, oh, I don't have a voice. You are discounting yourself. Because you think you are not as talented as your friend. You are not as gifted as the other person. Oh, I've gone through too many setbacks in my life. I don't think I, there can be a bounce back for me. God cannot use somebody like me. I've tried it in the past. It never worked out. So you just bury the dream. You keep it in hiding. My message to you this morning is very simple. 
quit hiding what God has given to you. You know, the scripture says in Matthew chapter 5, I believe verse 16, that you don't light a candle and hide it. Verse 15. And hide it under the bushel. It says, let your light so shine before men that men will see your good works. Your light is your talent. God has given you talents. God has given you gifts to make a mark in your world. God did not give you those for you to hide it. He said, let it shine into this dark world. There are people waiting for your gifts. There are institutions waiting for your talents. There are companies waiting for you to manifest. What you have can change your community. But you keep it in hiding. One thing I want you to know is this. Your gift is not just for you. Your gift is for the world. The world needs your talent. We need your creativity. We need your smile. You know, some people, just your smile alone can lighten the burden on another. Now, don't let fear talk you out of it. You know, you can't play it safe your whole life. You've got to step it out. You've got to, don't, you can't play safe and fulfill your destiny. You know, if Jesus wanted to play safe, he won't enter that grave. <laughs> what if, if I don't resurrect? He won't enter. But you have to, at one, some point in your life, you have to just believe in what God has placed in you. And say, no, I am taking a step of faith. This is where faith is needed. That is why the Bible says the just, the righteous must live by faith. You may have everything on your inside. You may have the talent. You may have the treasure. But you need to step it out by faith and believe that you have what it takes for God to take you to where he desires. Hallelujah. You know, God will put you in a situation on purpose that looks too big, too overwhelming. And it's because God knows what's in you. He knows what you are capable of. He knows what he has put inside of you when he was creating you. You know, you will always be tempted to swim back and play safe. You don't want to rock the boat. You just want to go unnoticed. But there's no way you can reach the fullness of where God has called you to if you are playing it safe. Hallelujah. God, one thing I want you to know is this. If you take that step of faith, God will step in and help you do what you couldn't do on your own. But you need to take that step of faith first.
Here's the key. You can't wait until the fear goes away. And say, okay, maybe when the fear goes away, then I will do it. No. Like I made a comment about a week ago on Facebook. I said, courage is not the absence of fear. But it is taking steps of faith in the midst of fear. Knowing that God has got this. That's what courage is. Men of courage is not as if they don't have fear. But they know that God, God has got them. And they, take, they continue to take their steps. Even in the face of fear. You know, some people say when I get my courage up, that's when I'm going to step up to teach the class. Then I'll start my business. Then I'll go on that date. <laughs> Why you are afraid, you need to take steps. Praise the Lord. Because that fear may not go away. You have, you have to do it in spite of the fear. No more hiding. No more holding back. No more looking down on yourself. Undervaluing yourself. It is your set time for exploits. You know, I feel afraid. But I have chosen not to let fear control my life. And I've chosen to take steps of faith. Hallelujah. One thing I want you to know is this. No one that has ever done anything great in life has done it without fear. They felt the fear, but they did it afraid. Because there's always the fear of the unknown. If you want to be a pace setter, you want to make a mark, the fear of the unknown will always be there. But you have to take that steps anyway. Especially once you have the knowing in your spirit that this is God speaking. You know, in 2015, seven years ago, you know, after God said it was time for us to move from the ministry we were for over nine years, where we've been serving faithfully, and he said, give us the vision for this ministry. It was, you know, it was a scary time. You know, I didn't know if I have it in me to pastor. You know, all this while, I just felt comfortable in the help ministry. Wherever you need me, I will be there to serve. And when God said, it is time to take this step of faith, it was scary. You know, and that's why I can say with confidence that sometimes you have gifts in you right now you don't know you have. Because I didn't know that I have what I have now at that time. Many times, you know, it was just even coming to, to, to share a message is scary. Will they receive it? 
will it touch lives? But I learned to trust God. I learned to, to lean on Him. And I chose to take the step of faith even while I was scared. You know, you have talents, skills, and potential. Don't hide it. God will always nudge you when it is time for you to manifest it. It will be in you for a while. You go through a period of training. You go through a period of understanding it. I believe those who are what I was going through during my years of uh, help ministry, it was a time of developing the giftings you have. But when God says it is time for you to show it out, don't continue hiding it, allowing fear to stop you. God will not call you how to do something he has not already made provision for. Is there faithful is he that has called you who will also do it? The calling of God upon your life is without repentance. It's irrevocable. Nothing can stop it. Your past cannot stop it. Naysayers cannot stop it. Critics cannot stop it. People may not celebrate your gifts. People may not even recognize your gift. But once you recognize it and God recognizes it, it is time for you to begin to show forth and manifest to your world. You know, one thing I want you to know is you are hearing this. Because this is a destiny moment for somebody. Some moments are destiny moments. And you don't want to lose your own destiny moment. Maybe there's something you've been struggling with. You've been going front and back with. And you've been just procrastinating about it. God is saying... It's time to come out of hiding. It's time to begin to trust God. It's time to put your confidence in God. That God will not leave you nor forsake you. He said, Yes, He's calling upon your life. It's not irrevocable. It's irrevocable. Nobody can cancel it. So don't get stuck in your past mistakes. Sometimes our mistakes, God transforms it into a message. God uses your past as a message so that you can use it to be a blessing to others. Don't get stuck in what you failed at. Sometimes where you failed, God uses it to tell you what how not to do it next time. And I can tell you, I wish I could tell you, you know, I, I suddenly turned into a different person. Immediately I obeyed. No. And all of a sudden, I was full of faith. I was, no. <laughs> I was full of courage. I was full of power. No. That I didn't feel fear. No. It was just the opposite. I was doing it. I, was, I feel unqualified. But gradually, God was qualifying me. God was helping me. God was doing the work. I was just following by faith. You know, the enemy will always try to deceive you 
to keep your gift hidden. He doesn't want you to shine. He doesn't want you to go where no one in your family has gone before. And it will work over time to try and convince you to, to shrink back, play it safe, and that's when you're going to have to have this boldness, this confidence that you are going to do it in spite of the fear. Well, what if I fail? You get up and try again. Every failure is preparing you. You will learn more through your failure than even through your success. You learn more through your failure than through your success. You will learn more in the difficult times when it did not work out than you, you will in the good time. You can't be so afraid of failure that you won't get out of your comfort zone. You know, we all know Thomas Edison. He failed 10,000 times before he finally invite, invented the light bulb. 10,000 times. And uh, a reporter asked him about all of his failures. And he said, well, I never really failed. I only learned 10,000 ways not to make light bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> that was the way he saw it. 10,000 ways in which you cannot make a light bulb. It was not failure for him. Because failure is not when you fall. Failure is when you fall and you refuse to rise up. And you keep yourself on the floor. But each time you fall, you, fall, you bounce up. That is not failure. That is a learning process. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. One thing I want you to know is that when you undertake to pursue a dream, a goal, even if it does not work out the first time, you are learning. You are growing. You are one step closer to seeing it happen. You know, when we come to the end of life, and when God asks you, what happened? With the gift I give you, what what will be more disappointing that you have all these gifts and you never take any advantage of it? What could you, I have become if I didn't let fear hold me back? Where would I be if I wouldn't have eaten my gifts, eating my talents, eating my creativity? Friends, life is too short. Stir up the gift of God in you. Make the most of this day. God has unique gift for everyone. No one was created church change. There's something unique about you. You just need to look inwards and stir it up and begin to take steps of faith and you see it manifest in a great way. Praise the Lord. Don't let fear of people, fear of failure, the fear of being criticized hold you back. 
Well, Steve, I don't want anyone judging me. I don't want anyone talking badly about me, about mouthing me. Can I tell you respectfully? Somebody is talking about you right now. Somebody is jealous of your success. Somebody is trying to discredit you even as we speak. You know, people are going to talk whether you settle or whether you stretch. You might as well stretch because they're still going to talk. Stretch to pursue what God has put in your heart. You know, even as a teenager, you don't need to, to waste your youth, youthful years just because you feel you have enough time. You can make the most of your youthful days and not be a gray-eared old man or woman and you're still doing what you needed to be, have been doing as a youth. Just because you want to belong? Just because you don't want your friends to say, oh, you're not, you're not, you're not uh, very, you're too focused, you are too determined, so you want to slack just to have some friends around you. When you choose to be focused on what God has called you to be, the right people will find you. People that believe in your goals, that believe in the same passion like you. One thing I want you to know is this. People cannot stop you from your destiny if you, don't, if you refuse to stop yourself. What they say doesn't determine who you are. You know, every person will always have a negative charter. People will always say things. But it's a distraction. Somebody says it's a distraction. Don't let it upset you. Quit being offended by it. God heard what they are saying. And he will fight your battles. He will be your vindicator. You know, one of the best things I've learned is everyone is not supposed to be for you. Everyone is not supposed to be for you. Everyone is not supposed to like you. You can't reach your destiny without opposition. Without negative chatter, without critics, you can't reach your destiny. So waiting for everyone to align themselves with you, to like you, is just wasting. You are wasting away. You are wasting your destiny. Jesus would not have risen from the dead if Judas did not betray him. Hallelujah. So quit worrying about who is not for you. If you just ask that a guess, out of every 12, there's always be one that are not for you. So just calculate the match. <laughs> If they can do it for Jesus, maybe yours will be two out of uh, 12. So. <laughs> Hallelujah. Quit worrying about who is not for you. Some enemies are designed as a part of your destiny. The Bible says, He has set before you a table before your enemies. 
You need your enemies after you have finished the turkey, the chicken, and the cheese so that they will pack and clean up after you. Hallelujah. So you need them around you so that they can, they can also go to town with your testimony. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then our mouth was, turned, was filled with laughter. And they said among them, the Lord has done great things for her. So you need people to help share your testimony for you. Say, that sister, do you, have you heard that we thought we would never get married? Wow. She's been hooked up with the biggest, finest, most handsome, richest man in town. They will share your testimony for you. The enemies are not going to stop you. They are only going to promote you. So don't stop yourself. Now keep running your race. Not looking to the left or to the right. Not bothered by who is not celebrating you. Not bothered by who is not sharing you. But looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of your faith. For the joy that was set before him is despised the shame and endured the cross. People who want to shameify you. People who want to bruise you. Bruise your ego. Nail put on you. Nails and crowns of shame and reproach. But keep focus. Don't let something distract you. Nothing should distract you from your focus. I am not hiding the gift of God. I will do all that God has called me to do. And, and finish my race with celebration. Hallelujah. One thing you must know is this. Sometimes you can't blame other people. Because they don't know your gifts the way you know it. They don't know what God has whispered into your ears. They don't know what God has laid in you. They did not create you. So don't blame them. They don't know. So they are walking against you from a place of ignorance. But you that you know, just ignore them. And be focused on what you know that God has called you to be. No more hiding for you. Somebody say no more hiding for me. So don't let their discouragement talk you out of it. Don't let the fear of what they think hold you back. You're not going to give account to people of what you did with your life. We're going to give account to God. You know, every voice said, Steve, you can't pastor a church. You're going to look like a fool. You don't even have any message. You don't have the training. Nobody's going to listen. You know, I had a thousand excuses to keep my gift hidden. I was afraid. I didn't have the experience. I was concerned of what people think. But I did what I'm asking you to do. I did it afraid anyways. I've learned you can talk yourself into your dreams or you can talk yourself out of your dreams. So quit telling yourself that you can do it. You don't have good personality. You don't have the training. 
get rid of those excuses and start telling yourself what God says about you. You know, excuses are the nails you used to nail the coffin of failure. Excuses are the building blocks of a house of mediocrity. Stop the excuses. Begin to look inside. There's something that you have. There's something that is unique about you. You've got what it takes for you to step into the next level of your destiny. You are strong. You are talented. You are blessed. You are favored. You've been fearfully and wonderfully made. How many people are fearfully and wonderfully made here? You know, when God created you, he put part of himself in you. So when God is creative, you are creative. When God is blessed, you are blessed. When they say God is favored, then you are favored. Because you have part of God in you. No wonder the Bible says, don't you not know that you are God's? And you are the child of the most high God. They go on in, with ignorance. As, don't you know who you are? Those who know they are God. They will do what? They will be strong. And they will do exploit. You, know, you need to know who you are. Whoops. Who's you are and where you are from. I won't be staying in here or standing here right now if I've not learned to step out even though I felt afraid. What are you hiding? Your gifts, your personality, afraid to come out of your shell, afraid people might not accept you. It's time to let your light shine. Quit hiding your smile, brighten your world. Quit hiding your encouragement. Lift somebody up. Quit hiding your talent. Make the world better. If God has given you a gift to sing, start singing. Look for a platform to sing. If God has given you a gift to write, Start writing. Immediately the inspiration comes. Don't wait. Go put it down. The Bible says, write the vision down. Make it plain that he run it, that reads it. That is what God wants you to do. If God gives you the gift to teach, Start teaching. That gift is not meant to stay hidden. It's not doing you any good hidden. It's not doing the world any good hidden. The world is waiting for your manifestation. You know, a group, a group of uh, businessmen, you know, they were discussing where the wealthiest place is in the world. And some said, oh, most likely South Africa. Because that, there lies buried billions of golds. 
Another said, it's in the Middle East where we have oils, deposit of oils. But the truth is, the, the burial ground is the wildest. Because therein lay buried gifts, talents, treasures that were never tapped. Best-selling books that were never written. Missionaries, evangelists, teachers, great teachers that never taught. Because they were afraid. They didn't know they have it in them. And they got buried with it. I have chosen that I will I will die empty. I will not be buried with my gifts. I will not be buried with my talents. I will not be buried with the, with the treasures God has put in me. You know, there was a story. A businessman was going out on a travel and he called three of his servants and he gave them talents. Those talents, a talent was worth like a 20 year wage. He gave one five talents and he said, Go do something with it before I come back. He gave another one two talents. Go do something with it before I come back. And he gave one one talent. The one with the five talents, which I liken to the gift, the treasure, the blessings that God has given you. He went and traded with it. And he was able to make another five talents. The one with the two traded with it was able to gain back two talents. The one with one talent allowed fear to take hold of him. I don't want to lose this. I don't want to miss it. I would rather go and bury it. So that when my, the master come, I can present it back to him. And when the master came, the one with the five talents said, Oh, master, you gave me five talents. I traded with it. I have additional five talents. Oh, good job. Good job. Uh, faithful servant. Same thing with the second one. You gave me two. Here, I traded it. One. Then we, the one with the one came and said, well, master, you know, I didn't want to lose what you gave me. I was hiding it. I kept, you see, you gave me one. And here is the one. And the master was so upset with him. And he, the, the, the word he used to describe that, that servant is one of the most uh, derogatory and very harsh word. Let's look at that scripture. In Matthew chapter 25. In verse, in verse 30, maybe start from verse 29. Verse, start from 29. Maybe start from 28 for better understanding. That was what, what start from 27, sorry. Maybe it's 26. 26. He said, this was the way the, the Lord responded to this servant. The Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knowest that I reap where I sow not. 
and gather where I have not strawed, continue. Verse 27. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at least my coming I should have received my own with surety. That even if you cannot trade with the talent I gave you, you should have taken it to the bank. At least I will have gotten some interest. He said, take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which have ten talents. And verse 29. And for everyone that asks, that asks shall be given. And he that have abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken away even that which he had. Verse 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping, weeping and gnashing of the teeth. What a qualification. This was the strongest language that God has used in the Bible. It's interesting that this man, it wasn't as if he lied. He didn't lie. He didn't cheat. He didn't kill somebody. He didn't have an affair. What did he do? He buried his tyrant. He hid what God gave to him. And see how God described him. You and I have been given gifts. God has entrusted us with them. One day he's going to come back like that owner. We're going to see him. He's going to ask what you did with the talent I gave you. Whether you have one, whether you had two, whether you had five, it doesn't matter. God has given us all different abilities. We are not in competition with one another. Everyone has his lane and his race to run. What have you done with the the, the talent with the gift he gave to you. He gave to you. Don't start comparing yours with another person. Oh, because of this, it's because this one has five. This one can sing better. That's why I'm refusing to sing. When God asks you what you did with yours, are you going to say you buried it? Because you are afraid? Because you felt you were inadequate enough? Because you don't, because you are worried about what people around you will say. I'd like you to rise up right now. One thing I want you to know is this I don't have to outperform you, you don't have to keep up with your neighbor. What matter is what are you doing with what you have? Are you living in fear? Afraid to take a risk? Not willing to get out of your comfort zone? Not putting effort into developing your gifts? Have you buried it? Or are you living faith-based? Growing, stretching, increasing, looking for opportunities, believing you have the seeds of greatness. You know, the man with one talent buried his talent and showed his fear. He should have buried his fear and showed his talent. Are you buried your talent and showing fear? Or you are burying fear and showing forth your talent. I want you to speak to the Lord right now. You need to start burying the insecurities. Bury the doubts. Bury the negative thoughts. Bury what the critics have said. And start showing your talent. The 
Brother John, here, please, the guitar. It's time for you to pick it up again. Our sister here, Tishis, it's time for you to start dancing again. There are gift things you have in you that you have buried for so long. It is time for you to start. Our sister Diane, there she is a teacher. You need to start teaching Bible study. Start studying, bringing back what God has put in you. How long are you going to hold back? How long are you going to worry about, oh, if you don't have what it takes? It is time for you to step into what God has put into you and begin to manifest it. Just speak to your father right now. Cancel every spirit of fear. Cancel every spirit of doubt. Every spirit of procrastination. <laughs> procrastination. Procrastination is put into tomorrow what you can do today. And tomorrow will never come. Tomorrow will never come. Tomorrow will never come. Somebody is saying, oh, what I have is so little. I don't have much of a gift. But when you choose to put what you have in the hand of God, he multiplies it. The boy with the five loaves of bread and two fish. It was, how much was that to feed 5,000? But he step out and say, Father, God, take what I have. And immediately he gave it to God. God said, thank you. And he multiplied it. Until you step out and trust God and say, I have little gift, I have little talent, but I'm putting it in your hands. God will not begin the process of multiplication. You cannot multiply it on your own. It can never multiply buried inside you. But when you take it out, put it in the hand of God, God begins to multiply it. If you are here, you've not given your life to Christ. That is the beginning. God will not put his treasure in a vessel that he has not trusted. And for him to trust you, for him to flan to flame that talent in you, you need to put your hand in his hands. You need to show that you trust him. You need to show that you love him. You need to show that you are part of his family. If you take that step today, God will fan to flame every treasure, every gift, every talent that you have. What you think is nothing what you think is inadequate, what you think is insufficient, God will multiply it and will begin to show forth to your word. I want you to lift up your hands if you have not given your life to Christ and you want to do that. Or you gave your life to Christ before and for one reason or another you backslid it. Or if you just felt you have things in you that you know and you know you know. That God has put in you, but you have allowed fear to cause you to take, to keep it hiding. I like you. I like you to just lift up your hands and we'll pray with you. Just lift up those hands and we'll pray with you. Our God is here. I have made you so small in my eyes. Oh Lord, forgive me. I have believed in a lie that you are unable to help me. But now, 
I see my my heal my heart and show yourself strong and he my life and in my song oh Lord be Everlasting Father, I stand here with my hands lifted up because I know there are still things in me that I can, that I've been hiding. And your people are standing before you with their hands lifted because you are the lifter hope of men. You said every good and perfect gift is from you. You know what you have put in us. You know the treasures, the deposits you have placed in everyone that is standing with their hand lifted. And they say, Lord, we've kept it hidden for long. It is time for us to step out. It is time for us to manifest that gift, that talent. Lord, I pray and I release the grace to come and shine out of darkness in the name of Jesus. They will no longer keep that light hidden in the bushel, but they will shine brightly to their world and men will begin to see the treasures the talent and the goodness of God in their life and they will give glory to God Lord from today they begin to step into the fullness of their destiny from today everything that is hidden Lord will begin to show forth we, they, we overcome fear we overcome fear of the unknown we overcome the critics we overcome overcome every spirit of doubt limitations that has kept us under and we step into the fullness of what you have created us to be thank you everlasting father blessed be your name for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed somebody shout a big hallelujah somebody shout a big hallelujah somebody shout a big hallelujah Please, you may be seated as we prepare our offering for the Lord this morning. You know, God can only multiply what you present to him. And that includes in the area of your finance. If many people, if you keep your seed hidden, instead of bringing out to bury it in the, in the hand of God, in the altar of God, that seed will remain a seed. But when you take a step of faith and say, Lord, this seed, I'm no longer hiding it from you. I'm bringing it forward as a seed in your hands. And you, you will be amazed how God will multiply that seed. A seed will become a tree. And before long, that tree will become a forest. Until you trust God enough to say, no, I am going to trust you with my finances and I know this ground covenant city ground is a fertile ground where you can slay your sacrifice if you have done that just lift it up and speak a word to it bless that seed in your hands as you are about to bring it to the altar of the most high God as you're about to bury it as you're about to slay it ask God to breathe on it ask God to cause it to 
come unto him like a sweet smelling savour in the name of Jesus. God will break every yoke of financial bondage in your life in the name of Jesus. I decree financial liberty. I decree financial freedom. I decree financial buoyancy in the name of Jesus. Every hardship you have suffered financially as you trust God is coming to a end in the name of Jesus. Thank you everlasting Father. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus mighty name we have prayed. So let's come forward and drop our offering quickly. If you are online, you can give your offering via our online giving services through Cash App, PayPal. Zell or text giving to 5592057443 There is power in the name of Jesus Power in the name There is power in the name of Jesus So much power in the name of the way you show your your love your trust your confidence in God is through your praise when you sing when you dance in God's presence when you release yourself you send the enemy at bay say this one is touch not my anointed do my prophets no harm. God bless you and will receive this offering on behalf of God as a sweet smelling servant. We we'll bless every hand that has given and we release bounty harvest into everyone in the name of Jesus. Amen. Quickly, as we close, we shall we, we will be hosting a a wedding here today one of our sister ministries will be using our facility for a wedding so please uh, that's why we'll be having our fellowship in the lobby because they will be using the our fellowship hall 
And if you have somebody that wants to wear that wants to they let them uh, we can host them. Uh, let us know and we can see how we because what that is part of what we want to be offering as service to the community. Praise the Lord. So if you have somebody that desires that uh, they're looking for a place. Not me wear them personally. That's a different thing. But they're looking for a venue. And they have their pastor. They don't have a venue. We can accommodate them here eh, uh, with a little fee. Praise the Lord. But if they want to, us to wear them, then they need to go through certain process here in the church. I won't wed a stranger. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm sure some of you should be getting ready. Your wedding may be next. So just tap into the grace of today. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know somebody is tapping right there. You start. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Is somebody here? This is your first Sunday here at Covenant City. First Sunday here. Do we have anybody? Uncle Abbott, you are the grandpa here, so. <laughs> I think the, the Auntie Denise, she left already. Praise God. I think this is your first Sunday here. My beautiful daughter, can you please rise up? Holy Spirit, I've located you. This is your first Sunday right am i right praise god and i saw the way she was so much in tune with the service in the spirit singing the songs i can see the glory of god upon her in a in a, in a greater way please come forward let's know you don't don't be shy just come this this hallelujah god bless you god bless you please can you give her a microphone we just want to know your name and uh, who invited you and your experience so far in the service. My name is Allie. Allie. God bless you, Sister Allie. And I came with my dad. Oh. Brother John, God bless you. How is your experience so far? The, your experience? The experience? I like it a lot. Praise God. Praise God. Please let's stretch forth our hands towards her. Let's release the blessings of God upon her afresh. Let's ask God to give her the desires of her heart in righteousness. God to give her beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for sadness, and the garment of praise for heaviness in the name of Jesus. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, sister, pastor, hey, Mrs. Denise. Denise. Denise yeah, God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Praise the Lord, saints. I came to just rejoice with this mighty woman of God. She's an Esther in her own right. She has the beauty and favor of God. She's a businesswoman. I just came to celebrate with her today. She's encouraged me. We are across the street from the Pink Palace. The little, I'm going to call it the, like it is, a little white church on the corner, right? <laughs> but we're bringing some color to that corner and to that church. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Amen. We are in diversity. Amen. You know, we worship God in spirit and in truth. So keep us in prayer. We feed the homeless and uh, some beautiful, hardworking people in our ministry. And hopefully God will divinely connect it through Sister Diane and my daughter, Ethan over there. Brother Ethan, I love you. That's my nephew. And I just thank God for being here today. You know, uh, keep my husband and I in prayer. My husband had trained under Bishop Caldwell. I don't know if you heard of him, and he just passed away, Bishop Caldwell, in Louisiana. So he's in bereavement because when my husband was younger, Bishop Caldwell used to mentor him and minister to him. But anyway, I'm excited to be here today, giving honor to both of you. I love your daughters and your little son over there. Hi, Joshua. And yes, I'm Auntie, Auntie Denise. I love you all. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. God bless you. We love you too. And God will continue to prosper 
your ministry and the works of your hand in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Let's rise up as we close. Again, let me encourage us to, to continue participating in a Bible study on Mondays. Actually, we've been dealing with uh, the book of Matthew chapter 5. The message of today is pretty much in line with what we've been talking about in the Bible study. About let your light shine. Let your light shine. Matthew chapter 5. We, our text is from verse 13 to verse uh, uh, 16. So please join us tomorrow at 6 p.m. We are holding it on Zoom. Even when we take it out to other locations, we will still connect on Zoom because we don't expect everybody to be at the location. So we, we want these people connect from all over the world. So let's connect. Let's be blessed by... You can ask questions in this platform, but tomorrow you can contribute. You can ask questions. And that is how we sharpen ourselves. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in that uh, if you need the link, please reach out to Pastor Kemi or myself. We'll send the link to you so that you can join Zoom. There are faithful brethren that have been joining before and they've slacked off. It's time to slack back in. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't want to mention names, but just you know yourself, just, just glide back in before Pastor start mentioning your name. Or I come knock on your door. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, what did you say? <laughs> I'm not talking about you. <laughs> okay, I will send you the link. I, I will send you the link. Let's, let's, let's just uh, sing our song right now. Let's connect so you can collect. Connect to the next neighbor. Join hands together. We're all a family. So let's show so much of that. Hallelujah. Connect as you ready to collect. One, two, three, go. We are here. Come on, sing it like you mean it. And sing. Of the Father. We are joined as we, we are, are joined. With the Son. With the Son. We are children. We are children. Of the kingdom of, of the, the kingdom. kingdom. We are covenant. We are covenant family. We are one. And so surely goodness, goodness and, and mercy shall, shall follow us all the days, days of our, our lives. And, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.